Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the sales journal entries in accounting. Hello, my name's Jeff. I teach accounting and I use Excel all the time. So I basically teach accounting and finance using Excel. So here we are in the financial accounting chapters. We're in chapter four, the accounting for merchandise activities. I've got articles, I've got videos and playlists so you can understand what's going on. We're working our way through. It's October, 2023 and I'm working on all these different financial accounting chapters. All right, so the two inventory systems are periodic and perpetual. And perpetual is the one we're gonna to use today where we always calculate the updated amount of inventory and we always calculate the cost of goods sold or the cost of sales when the items are sold. Now credit terms, remember you can extend credit terms where if they pay early, our customers pay early, then you get a discount. And so 210 net 30 is a real common one where they get a 2% discount if they pay within 10 days. It could be no discount and you'll just say net 30. So the total is due in 30 days with no discount. Now the shipping terms, we're going to assume the FOB shipping point where the buyer pays all the shipping costs. Now my previous video was on purchases. So if you don't understand all these, you want to see how this works, then check out that previous video. Check out the link below. All right, so let's talk about sales. Sales is selling our product and we have two different contra accounts. One is called sales discount. So if we extend discounts and they pay early and they, instead of paying a thousand dollars, they pay, they get a discount of say 20. They pay $980 and that $20 is, we're gonna call that sales discounts. If they return items, we call that sales returns and allowances. So sales minus the discounts minus the returns gives us net sales. Now, in a perpetual system, we're gonna make two entries anytime we make a sale and then we'll calculate the cost of goods sold in inventory. So I've just made up some numbers here but we'll work on this. So every time we make a sale, we have two entries. So let's get down to our two entries. So our sales under the perpetual method, let's say we sold inventory for $3,000 on account with terms net 30. All right, there's no discount here. So we're gonna set up accounts receivable and we'll recognize sales. So accounts receivable and sales. Now indent a little bit, that way you know uh, this is going to be a debit and a credit. And we're going to, in the debit column, we're going to put 3000 And then I'm just going to just point to the 3000 So it's going to duplicate that. So I've got accounts receivable and sales. So our sales account now has $3,000 in it. Now, what is our cost of goods sold? Well, our cost is 1800 So we're going to debit cost of goods sold. Remember, that's an expense. And we'll credit inventory, that's an asset, for $1,800. So cost of goods sold goes up with a debit, inventory goes down with a credit. So our cost of goods sold here is $1,800. We only have one entry, so we know the balance of sales is $3,000. The balance of cost of goods sold is $1,800. If we stop right now, how much is our gross profit? Well, sales minus cost of goods sold, our gross profit is going to be 3,000 minus 1,800 or 1,200. Let's keep going. We got another entry. So let's say we sold inventory for 8,000 with terms 210 net 30. So we give them 10 days to pay. They get a 2% discount or the total is due at day 30. And the cost was 60% of the sales price. Now I'm just going to copy. These are the same journal entries instead of typing over again. These are the same entries when we make purchase, I'm sorry, we make sales. And here, 8,000 is our accounts receivable. And then we're going to take the 8,000 times 0.6. So our cost was 60% of the sales price, or 4,800. So we're going to add to this our sales. We're going to add an 8,000. And to our cost of goods sold, we're going to add 4,800. So what is our total sales right now? Our total sales, 3,000 plus the eight is 11,000. 
And what is our total cost of goods sold? 1800 plus 4800 6600 All right, so we made two sales. We haven't collected any of the cash yet. All right, on the 11th, on June 11th, the buyer on that first transaction on June 1st returned goods with a sale price of $500. So instead of reducing the sales account, we're going to increase a sales returns and allowance account for 500. And then we're going to credit accounts receivable. They owe us $500 less because they returned some items. Now, we're going to reverse the cost of goods sold transactions. We need to debit inventory because we're we've received it back and we're going to credit cost of goods sold for how much? Well, it's 60%, so we're going to take the 500 times 0.6. Let's go back and look at the very first transaction. 1800 is our cost divided by 3000 our selling price. So it is 60% and we we're actually told the cost is 60% of the sales price. So we don't have to do the fraction. We can just multiply times 60%. So what happens to our sales? Well, nothing to our sales. We've increased our sales returns and allowances. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then our cost of goods sold, we actually have reduced that down $300. So $300. So what is the balance of cost of goods sold? It's going to be $1,800 plus $4,800 minus the $300. So we know we have cost of goods sold is updated. We have two accounts. We have to figure out net sales here in just a minute. On the 17th, the buyer... On the 10th, this entry right here for $8,000. On the 17th, the buyer of the 610 transaction paid the account in full. So here's the question. There was a 210 net 30. Do they get to take advantage of the discount? Yes, they do. So what we have is we're going to receive cash. And we'll set up, the, uh, get rid of the account receivable. How much do they owe us? They owe us a full $8,000. Is there a discount? Yes, 2%. They paid within 10 days. They paid on day seven, looks like. So how much is our sales discounts? Well, it's going to be 8,000 times 0.02. 2% in decimal form is 0.02. So we're going to receive $160 less. So how much cash did they actually pay and how much cash do we receive? 8,000 minus the 160. We collected a check for 7,840. They took advantage of the discount. We're happy because we get the cash in early, but it did cost us $160 of cash. So we now have cash we've collected of 7,840 and we write off that account for the full $8,000. All right, so we're through with the journal entries. Let's ask a couple of questions. What are net sales and what is gross profit or gross margin? All right, so what we have here is I think we've updated the sales and we've updated the cost of goods sold. This is correct here. Let me just copy this so we know the balance of our cost of goods sold. What is our sales discounts? Well, we know it's a debit balance. Our sales discount is 160 and what's our sales returns and allowance remember that was five hundred dollars let me go back and grab that number all right so here's what we have we have sales we have sales discounts we have cost of goods sold sales returns and allowances now what are our net sales well our, our sales are going to be eleven thousand our sales discounts are going to be 160 i'm going to put that in as a negative so you can see we're subtracting our sales returns and allowances are 500. So what is our net sales? Well, our net sales are, looks like 10,340. So we made sales of 11,000, but we uh, had some discounts and returns. So our net sales is 10,340. So let's look at the first couple of lines on the income statement. What is our gross profit or gross margin? Both of those mean the same thing. We're going to start with our net sales and we're going to subtract out our cost of goods sold, 6,300. So what kind of profit did we make? 
we made a $4,040 profit. We had net sales of $10,340. Our cost was $6,300, and so therefore we made a profit of $4,040. Hey, thanks for watching. Watch the next video. Please like, please subscribe. Ask questions in the comments below, and we'll see you on the next video.